It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. According to the latest reports, Oklahoma lawmakers have rejected the bill that would have banned corporate punishment for kids with disabilities in schools. So on what basis did they decide to keep corporate punishment? Well, I'm going to play the clip for you guys. You know, several scriptures could be read here. Let me just read just one. Proverbs 29, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So that would seem to endorse the use of corporal punishment. So how would you reconcile this bill with, with Scripture's counsel on this matter? Um, I would say that this is limited to special needs children's. I'm going to let you have one more question, and then you have to get back in the queue, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for your tolerance. Um, on what basis would we automatically assume? Now, I'm sure there are some cases where capacity is so limited they may not understand the rules and expectations. But on what basis would we automatically conclude that a special needs child uh, would, should not get corporal punishment? Because in this bill it says that these are students that are classified as IDEA special needs students. Yes, you heard that correctly. The main reason why they don't want to actually prevent suffering of disabled kids is, well, because the Bible says so. Now, this right here is a clear-cut example of what I call Christian nationalism. Now, before we get into more details, let's first define what exactly is Christian nationalism. That way, everybody's on the same page. Christian nationalists primarily focus on policies such as passing laws that reflect their view of Christianity and its role in political and social life. In countries with a state church, Christian nationalists are seeking to preserve the status of a Christian state and uphold an anti-establishment position. By that definition, Christian nationalists are separate from secularists. A secularist is a person that advocates for the idea of separation of church and state. It's entirely possible for somebody to not be religious and be a secularist it's entirely possible for a person to be religious and a secularist. So basically, secularism covers people, no matter their background, who actually think that the church and state should not mix together. And the main grounds on why they will argue that is largely because letters of the founding fathers of our nation, as well as the Constitution, have evidence that they actually intended for our country to be a secular nation. There's an article that's called Corporate Punishment and School Creates More Trauma for Children. And I'm going to read a segment out loud for you guys to understand where I'm coming from. It says right here, the experts agree, hitting kids did not promote healthy development. In fact, not a single scientific research studies demonstrate that hitting children leads to healthy, compassionate, respectful, and successful adults. In fact, the opposite is true. Hitting kids, what do you call it, spanking, popping, pedaling, whooping, slapping, increases the chances of children to becoming more violent, they experience mental health and academic problems, and develop problems with drugs or alcohol. Now, within Christianity, there is something that is known as divine commands theory. To keep it short, divine commands theory is the idea that the supernatural being, the God of the Bible, is the objective standard. And so whatever what the God said is right is right, and whatever the God said is wrong is wrong, and therefore that's the objective standard to which everybody needs to live by. Let's take, for example, the idea of murder. Well, in this hypothetical, if this supernatural being says that murder is absolutely right, or that rape is right, or any type of grotesque thing you can think of in your head, is right because the God says so, and because the God says so, it's justified to do those things. One of the characteristics of the God of the Bible 
is that he's actually all knowing. So he knows about the past, the present, and basically the future. You mean to tell me that this God of the Bible didn't even know that corporal punishment is actually detrimental towards kids? So either he already knows about it, but don't do anything anyway, but does not know it because he cannot see the future. But more so to the point, why should we be basing our laws based upon the Bible? The Bible is over 2,000 years old. There's edits, re-edits, translation, retranslations, book removes, books added, and subtracted, so on. It's been going through like a whole lot of things throughout the whole entire time it was actually created. And the morality that reflects the Bible should not be a guiding force to create laws and legislation because people back then had horrific things. We should be basing our code, our morality, based upon the very principles of utilitarianism. Now the main principles for utilitarianism is harm reduction. So if we can actually all agree that something as simple as harm reduction is actually essential for everybody, that's a good starting point. Largely, because it doesn't necessarily matter the time period or the year that we live in, something that actually caused like a lot of harm will be really, really bad no matter where you live, right? If we do not necessarily question something as horrific like slavery, will continue to have slaves in the United States to this very day. And so, no matter the time period, slavery under the standard of harm reduction will always be wrong. But of course, if we continue to base our ideas off a text that has like a whole entire different morality system, a whole entire outlook than what we have today, it will continue to hold us back in terms of progress. The Bible is a collection of mythology, folklore, poems, and should not be taken seriously by anybody in the 21st century. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, is it actually a good idea to basically influence our laws and to create our country in a theocracy? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Taylor.